today, we're going to be talking about discharge, which is simply the calculation of how much water is flowing through the river or stream at any given time. So first thing we're going to look at is going to be this diagram right here. This diagram depicts how water enters the river or stream that we're looking at. And so in Minnesota, most of our streams get a lot of their water from underground sources. So in this diagram, you can see that the water rains onto the, onto the land, flows underground in the underground water, and then it'll add to the river, and it'll start flowing with the river. And especially in the spring, a lot of this can come overland or underground through snow melt. And knowing how much water is flowing after snow melt is very important to help prevent flooding or know where it might flood or if it might flood. So to calculate discharge is actually fairly simple. First you just have to get the area of the river and so you get that by measuring the distance across and then measuring at a defined interval how deep it is. And so a lot of people go every meter or every yard is pretty common or depending on the river size people will make the Measurements less frequent if you're in a really big river. You probably don't want to have to measure it every meter. Then to get the actual calculation, you just take the average depth and multiply it by the width, and that'll get your area of your cross section. And then you take your velocity, which you can simply get by floating something down like a piece of wood down the river at a couple different spots and averaging that out. You take the velocity and the area multiply them by each other and you get how much water is flowing per second so now that we know a little bit about it we're actually going to show you how to do one and so here is a nice picture of our lovely sample site which is just at session of the mississippi just below or downstream of the outer tail power dam so you can see angie is wading out and we're actually going to be taking a measurement of the distance of how far away we actually are or how wide the stream actually is and so we simply you'll take this nice long measuring tape we have we'll just measure all the way across so here we are actually going to be taking our depth measurements and we're not going to show you all of them because i would just make the video too long but we are taking measurements every couple of meters and we're going to use all those depths to average it out so we do this so that we can get an average of each section of the river. And so we don't want to have just the deep spots or just the shallow spots or else that will really throw our numbers off. So we like to make sure we're able to get a good representative sample. So we try to hit every spot that we can and do it at a consistent interval. It just makes it easier to calculate discharge at the end of the day. So now we're going to be actually getting the velocity. And so this is easiest done with two people. So you take the two people and you spread out one person upstream and one person downstream. And you get a certain defined distance away. So we are currently using 10 meters. And then you take a object and you drop it in the water and you let it float by and then time it until it gets past the other person. And so that's how fast it is going per second. And so what we did we actually just dropped it and let it go for 10 meters and so then we can just take that and divide it from the time it took and we can get that to meters per second so looking at this diagram you can see the numbers we got for our river it is not representative of the actual depth it's just a quick diagram I whipped up but for a total cross-sectional area, we got 6.65 square meters, and averaging out all of our velocity readings, we got 0 0.704 meters per second as the flow. And so if we were to calculate that together, we get 4.6816 cubic meters of water a second, or that equals roughly about 1,236 gallons a second flowing down this little stretch of the Mississippi. 
So you can see our small number of about 1,236 gallons of water. If you compare that to what it actually puts out into the Gulf of Mexico a second, it's putting out roughly 4.4 million U.S. gallons a second. So you can see on our stretch of the Mississippi up in northern Minnesota, it is putting out a lot less water than it does at its outlet. And I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.